my name is Nils and uh, in this uh, quite short video I will talk about how you can set up an automation that will uh, alert you if any automations are paused in Salesforce Marketing Cloud engagement. Um, so um, there is an article with this video. Uh, if you haven't read it, I'll just quickly show the four steps needed. Um, step one, we will use server-side JavaScript to pull this uh, post automations. We will have uh, two SQL queries to uh, filter and uh, manage the pulled out data. And lastly, a email send activity if we find something uh, that uh, needs to be sent to us. Basically, if there is any post automation with the last seven days, we will get an email. Um, you will need four data extensions set up for this. And uh, when you have them ready, you can uh, start adding each steps in Automation Studio. So uh, let's uh, start with step one. So uh, in this uh, type of video, I'll think it's just best I'll just glance over it, go over it quite quickly, this, uh, this code. It will be too much if I would write everything down. Uh, but as you can see here, we tell uh, the system that uh, this is something that's going to run at the server using the core library. And that's going to allow us to use the functions within server-side JavaScript in the Marketing Cloud. Um, the first thing we need to set is uh, which data extension are we going to be using to store the post automations in. And that name is post automations. Then we start by wiping this uh, data extension completely if there was some old data there. We do this by using uh, VS Proxy. And uh, VS Proxy is uh, very handy for a lot of things. Um, not going to go into details into that in this video but it uh, can uh, help us uh, wipe, wipe the data extension, basically. And uh, if you are using this script on a cloud page, you can also uncomment this and you can see a little bit uh, what's happening in the script. Uh, once we've taken care of the wiping of the data extension, it starts, we're <clears throat> gonna start to grab the automations. And the automations we want are the ones that have a status of four because that is the post uh, status code. And again, we use uh, VS Proxy. And I uh, can also mention that VS Proxy is so nice to use because you can basically access any type of SOAP API uh, with it without having to put in any credentials. Um, so anything that you can do with SOAP, you can do with VS Proxy basically. You just, uh, anything that is within your business unit, so to say. But here we can see that we deciding which uh, columns we want to look at for these automations. So it's object ID, name, customer key, status, and modify date. And then we put a filter because we want the one that is equal to four or the post ones. Uh, next, uh, we retrieve these automations by doing prox retrieve automations, columns, and the filter. And then we need to store these uh, retrieved automations somewhere. So we put up an array called post. Uh, and just for clarity, uh, it's nice to sort this array A to Z. If you have a bunch of uh, post automations, they will just be A, B, C, D, or, and so forth. Then when we are done with that, uh, we loop over this uh, uh, array that we just uh, created. And for every automation, one row will be inserted into the data extension. So if we have three rows, uh, three post automations, that will be three rows. Uh, and what you see down here is also uh, just extra. Uh, so what I like to do is uh, instead of just putting this immediately into Automation Studio and run it there where you don't see anything, it can be nice to run this on a cloud page. So then you can just have it like this and uh, once you run or load that cloud page, you will see uh, exactly what it can pull out for you. And when you see that everything looks good there, you are ready to put it in, in step one in Automation Studio. So that's step one. Let's continue to step two. Step two, quite uh, straightforward uh, query activity. We just uh, take a look at that uh, data extension we created in step one. 
uh, should have status four. We select these uh, fields and we want everything that is within the last seven days. Now, maybe you think that seven days is not the correct number for you. So if you want anything that is the last three days or 14 days or 30 days, just go ahead and change this number. Um, but that was step two. Let's now continue to step three. All right. So here in uh, step three, we check if there are any rows in step two. If there aren't any rows, we will just copy nothing. But if there are rows, that means there are something that we want to send to ourselves in an email and then those uh, rows will be copied. Uh, yes, let's now continue with step four. Step four. Now this is the last step where we send an email to ourselves if there are something to send. And uh, currently we're still in uh, the GitHub where it's just easier to see the code. But uh, as you can see, uh, we have AMP script in front of us. And that is what we're gonna be using in the email send activity. But for this step, I figured that I, instead of hanging out here in GitHub, I just jump in to show you how this automation actually looks like when it's all set up. And you can see that step one, we have our SSJS script activity. Then we have the two query activities. And uh, it can be good to just pay extra attention to the uh, query number three here, because that is the one that basically populates if we have any rows uh, to send to. So if there are no rows, that data extension is gonna be empty. And then if there are no rows and this activity runs, it will basically send nothing. And the opposite, if there are rows, step number four will pick up those rows and send us an email. So we will only get an email if there is anything to report as a post automation in the last seven days. Uh, just so you know where that logic comes from. But let's look at the uh, number four here. <clears throat> so uh, first we use uh, lookup order rows to pull everything from the DE called post automations last seven days. Now this is the DE that was populated by our SQL filter in uh, step two. Then we also count how many rows that uh, came back using row count. If there are rows, we print a short header message. If there aren't any rows, we just say no post automations in the last seven days. And that is not gonna be shown to everyone because if there are no post automations, we won't be sending any emails. But when there are rows, we gonna loop through them with a for loop. Now each uh, loop iteration here gives us the automation name the customer key and the modified date. So that is what's gonna be shown in the email as you saw in the beginning of the video. We uh, basically print one line per automation with a running number at the start. And then the date is just formatted in a clear way. So it's easy to see when it was uh, last modified. Uh, so yeah, there you have it, that is it. Uh, now anything that was paused within the last seven days will be immediately emailed to us and we won't miss anything from now on. Hope this uh, gives you some value and perhaps uh, reduce some headaches, uh, at least it uh, did for me. So uh, that's it, take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.